Uh, Sunshine is my real middle name. O'Connor, good Irish girl. Yes, yoga teacher. I grew up in the sweet town of Oakville, Ontario. Prestigious place, I'm a daughter of a politician, so uh, an interesting upbringing. After high school, I went to Ryerson University in Toronto for radio and television arts. And from there, I interned in radio. It was, my passion was radio more than TV, but I did work in TV as well in um, New York City. So it was, a, you know, I think my radio and television experience was a bridge into where I, my calling. I was addicted to the gym, I was a total gym rat through university and while living in New York. And so I would go to the gym and I'd work out hard, I wanted to have the perfect body, but I would notice that I was also a competitive swimmer for years and I was still coaching swimming and teaching aqua fit, so I was still in aquatics. And I realized it was all this, right, and I needed this. So at the gym, I, I was very flexible from taking gymnastics and dance, I would start to do self-taught yoga and people would sometimes come to me and I would be in sort of funny positions, lotus or whatever else, I'd make poses up and people would actually come up to me. We're talking early 90s before the yoga craze and they'd say, uh, is that yoga? I met somebody in New York and had a casual relationship, it was semi long distance because I was still living in Toronto part time and just really going down for workshops in New York and um, became pregnant and decided to have it and thought we would get married and I'd get my green card and um, live in New York and pursue my acting and it would all work out. Not quite what happened. My mom was diagnosed with cancer when I was pregnant and wasn't a very good prognosis. I decided to stay in New York and have the baby and I did and then I went home when she was a newborn. Baby Brianna was born in uh, November 19th, 1997 and I went home and I lived with my mom and took care of her. Day by day, my mom was terminal. She lost faculties, she lost abilities. While day by day, anyone who has a child knows the first 18 months, that child is gaining abilities almost daily. And so it was a very interesting process to watch this emerging person while someone else is fading out. They're making their exit, the other one's making their entrance. And so um, it was a surreal experience. It was beautiful, but it was difficult. And at the time, I was still practicing yoga only in my own living room with my videos, with my tapes, as a coping mechanism. Um, I'll, I am Irish, and we were loosely Catholic. But my parents, you know, they sent us to Sunday school to get us out of the house. Four daughters, let's find a reason to get them out. Uh, and so that, the, my parents were not religious. And my three sisters, it didn't really resonate with them but me. I fell in love with the whole concept of a higher power for, at a very young age. Spirituality came before the yoga. The yoga just brought it up another level. And I thought I can study this and I can pass this on. I wanted to find a yoga studio that had a spiritual base to it that, I mean, in Edmonton I was in a studio where I learned to chant and we did kirtans and it took yoga to the next level for me. So I wanted a studio where people owned and I could read from spiritual texts and a kirtan would not be a foreign concept. Um, I was a bit disappointed that in Kitchener-Waterloo, at least in 2010, that didn't really exist. Fusion Movement had, was one years old at that point, and I found them on the internet, and they advertised themselves. The first thing I saw on their website was rock and roll yoga. They had, I forgot what they called it, rock, hot rock yoga or something like that, and it was yoga to rock music. And I thought, okay, this is probably not the most spiritual place, skip it. The only other place was Queen, Queen Street Yoga, and they weren't hiring. Now we're in a saturated market where there's way too many yoga teachers. Even the Y didn't need yoga teachers. And uh, so it was Queen Street Yoga who didn't need yoga teachers. So, so I was like, I have nowhere to teach. I can't believe this. I thought I got to check out this fusion movement place that does rock and roll yoga. It looks like the only option. <laughs> so I uh, called them, they said, come on in. It was one room with a curtain. There was no wall. There was, the lobby was not separated. It was separated by a curtain. And um, it started to grow, and it got to the point that the lobby would fill up with people for the next class, and that was impossible with this curtain, so we built a wall. And then this was a telemarketing, this is the second studio, it was a telemarketing firm. They left, 
and we were growing and we were growing to the point where we could run cl two classes simultaneously. So she took the second studio, almost doubled her rent and it's paid off. A good teacher truly studies the yoga philosophy, not just the yoga poses. We have a really high caliber of teachers that truly believe in what they're doing, that have made sacrifices to do this. I, I know two people now who are teaching here that left their day jobs because they were so passionate about yoga. I've had now three yoga students who have, they come to my restorative class, and they, they came to my restorative class in, in, through their entire chemotherapy. And then she started coming to my restorative as she lost all her hair, and I would be giving her the head massages, as, right down to the soft, bald head. And, and um, then I, she finished her chemo, and her hair grew back, and she gained her weight back, and she's still coming to my restorative yoga. This is a two-year journey now for her, and I was there twice a week, or sometimes a week or less as she she journeyed so that that I know helped I know the yoga helped her other people have just I've received a lot of letters emails and just testaments from people about how this was their anchor in hard times that makes it worth it so do you think yoga is for everyone though not necessarily sun salutations not necessarily certain poses, not necessarily doing pose after pose after pose as their main form of fitness. And uh, you know what I mean? That flow yoga is not for everybody. But I mean, any element of yoga, yoga is, is, it, is it there for, do you think it's, it's universal? Do yes. You think it's, I think if you look at it, depends how you define it. If you define yoga as a series of poses, maybe it's not for everybody. But if you define yoga as self-discovery, as looking within, as respecting your body and other human beings, as living peacefully, as following the yamas and niyamas, which is the, the philosophy of yoga, of following truth and non-harm and, and moderation. Why would those things not be for everyone?